welcome in. Hello. How's everybody doing today? I hope y'all are having a good day today. Today we are making cabbage and I couldn't be more excited. Listen, for the couple people that's in here, give a thumbs up. Lynette, hello. McKaylee, hello. M McKaylee, I think I'm saying that right. Ron Wilson, hello, how are you? Welcome back in, keep it. And just put it over there. You're so excited to watch. Okay, that's great. Viper, hello. Mo, hello, how are you? Thank you for coming back in and joining us. Every single person in here, welcome. Tabby, hello. Lady J, Alyssa Wooten, hello. Stephanie Jackson, uh, Mashara Lawson, hello. Wanda McMorris, hello, hello. Maggie, hello. Angelique, Geneva, Maddie Watts, Debbie and Miss B. Hello, Juanita, Debbie Parker, Valencia, hello. On the move, how you doing? <clears throat> Puenza, Tina Jenkins, Monica White, hello. Mary Addison, hello. Drew Moss, how you doing? Marcella, hello, how you doing? Car Carmela, Carmela, how you doing? Bobby Burnett, hello. Tabby Cat, hello. Patricia, hello, how's everybody doing? As you come into the chat, make sure that you're giving a thumbs up. Jeannie Young's gonna show you all a great time today. Jean Ward, welcome in, hello. Mildred, how you doing today? Uh, Maceo, welcome in. If I mess anybody's name up, I'm so sorry, y'all. Deborah, hello. Cat Slack, I am, I'm having a great evening. It, it didn't start so well this morning, but the good Lord is absolutely amazing because I feel much better than I felt this morning. I'm doing okay, McKaylee, how are you? Flora, hello. I, I ling, how do I say that? Alenia Wilson, hello. Debbie Parker, how you doing? Serena Dean, Marriott Brown, Renee, Joseph Ivy, hello. Alaska Family, hello. Miss Hawaii, I think, I, I hope that's how you say it, hello. Mar J N, hello. Rhonda Prelo, how you doing? Mashara Lawson, yes, absolutely. We, we agree. Angela Casey, how you doing? I hope y'all are having a great day today, and I hope you all need a recipe, <laughs> a good cabbage recipe. Y'all, here's the thing. When it comes to me making cabbage, I feel like my cabbage is delicious. Oh, it's so good. Maggie Cleves, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. Jaylene, hello. Primetime is back. How you doing? Sharon, hello. Deborah, hello, hello, hello. Monet, hello. Oh. All right, this is exciting. I can't wait to, I, I want a big old bowl. I want a big old bowl of cabbage. Now, for those in the background that don't eat pork, there's never ever any worries because you can make cabbage meatless or you can make it using beef, you can make it using turkey or chicken. Like really explore and have fun with what ingredients you put into your cabbage. Um, because there's beef sausages, there's turkey smoked sausages, chicken smoked sauce, anything you could imagine you can put into your cabbage. If you wanted to put pork bacon in it, you could. Like so, so what you love, that's what I want you all to put into your cabbage. You could even put corned beef in the cabbage. And when I show you all how to cook the cabbage today, I'm gonna go back to my pantry and grab some corned beef to show you what kind you can put in there if you ever wanted to make cabbage with corned beef in it, okay? Your, your cooking is life-changing. Thank you, my goodness. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, y'all. Let's bring the thumbs up up. 
During this live, let's make sure the thumbs up is matching with everybody that's in here. We're gonna have a great time today. Derek Eads is back. Mary, Janice, Maggie Cleaves, Irma, hello. If I miss your name, are you frying the cabbage today? I, I'm not frying the cabbage today. Um, I'm gonna cook it how I used to have it as a child. And it's delicious. It is delicious. And I just have to say that the way I make this cabbage, I feel like it's better than fried cabbage. I really do, because I don't know about you all, but I like some good pot liquor. And the way I make this cabbage, it leaves me with the pot filled with this beautiful broth that you call pot liquor, and it is so good. And you can just sop it up with I don't know, heck, a biscuit, some bread, some cornbread. I like the broth that I'm able to achieve the way I cook this here cabbage. So when I make cabbage, when I think of fried cabbage, it's always on the second burner, right? So if you say, Gina, going to make cabbage, I make it this way versus fried. It does sound good, right, Deborah? Absolutely. It's, not, it's, it's, it's how my dad used to make it, but my dad used to use um, bacon. But um, I know today, you know, if he were to cook it today, he uses a beef sausage, a beef smoked sausage, you know. But um, I'm using a pork smoked sausage that is so good. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Bring a thumbs up. up. We're going to wait for a few more people to come into the live and after they get in here, we're gonna get started. And this dinner is quick, easy, simple, delicious, cost effective, all of the above. Yes, yes, yes it is. Oh, that's the way you grew up eating it too, Mary. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so, but my dad tells me when he makes his cabbage today, he doesn't put any water in it. And I guess I can understand that, you know, because we know that cabbage has a lot of liquid to it. But I, I need some liquid put in mine. Chicken broth or water, I want to make that liquid that I like to drink. <laughs> How are you? Chris, I'm doing okay. How are you? Miss Hawaii. Huh? No. Oh, you do? Um, is that, let me see, is this Valencia? Yeah, Valencia says I love the pot liquor. Me too. Shirley Clark, hello, welcome in. Isabella, Isabella, how you doing? Latika is here. Latika said she is on her way. <laughs> Latika said, open up, Gina, I'm on my way. <laughs> Erica Parks, how you doing? Bobby Ross. Okay, so let's see. Now, if anyone be cooking with Gina, have any questions, please put the stop sign up so you can, thank you, Mildred, so I can answer your question. Now, there is some times that I miss that stop sign, but I'm pretty sure the people in the back will let me know. So-and-so has a question, right? Is there anybody that's in this chat as of right now that's going to be cooking cabbage with me? If you are, give me a red heart in the comment section. I'd love to know if you're cooking with me today. Sue, hello. Christine Rodriguez. And Joyce, hello. Mar, J-N, hello. Alaskan Wild, hello. Welcome in. Marietta Brown. Nita says hello. How are you, Nita? Welcome in. Dee Dee, hello. Love from Dallas, Texas. You just watched the chicken salad video. Rosanda, did you enjoy the chicken salad? Listen, listen. The chicken salad video was so much fun to make because I couldn't stop eating the chicken salad. It's good, right? <laughs> Okay, I see a couple of people saying that they're going to cook. Okay, that's great. Okay, Mary's cooking. Okay, this is great. Joyce is cooking. Okay. Okay. This is great. So now I'm going to give it about two minutes. Give you all some time to do whatever you need to do. Run to the restroom. Feed the baby. Take the dog out. Get your ingredients out. 
Get your hands nice and clean. We are going to rock and roll in about two seconds. LaCrease Turner, hello. I know, Miss Karen, the chicken salad. I'm going to eat some chicken salad later on. I'm going to eat some chicken salad later on with a couple crackers. Oh, Mary says, all I need with this cabbage is some buttery cornbread. <laughs> right? Yes. Normally, we have cornbread with cabbage if I feel like it. That's just, if I feel like it, I might make some. We'll see. Okay, somebody says I better say, <laughs> somebody says I better say their name. What, who is this? <laughs> Let me see. If I can pronounce it. LaCressa, <laughs> LaCressa Turner, <laughs> welcome in. <laughs> I said your name. <laughs> welcome in. Thank you all for coming in. <laughs> if you're new, tell me that you're new and we can welcome you in such a way. And if I miss, <laughs> it was funny. You better say my name. <laughs> Uh, normally people be thinking that like oh I hope she say my name this person just spelt it out you better say my name girl <laughs> all right you are you're hungry okay okay so we got about one minute we're gonna get up you're new uh, Drew Moss says he's new y'all he ain't new he far from new he been watching this since, since 2002 <laughs> Cheryl Fulton, first time here, welcome in. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so Ivory, Ivory is new, welcome in. Thank you for coming in and joining. What you're gonna notice is we have a good time here. We like to, we're gonna have good laughs, we're gonna talk about all type of topics. You never know what type of topic can come up. We're gonna cook. After we cook, we'll say a prayer. We'll eat together, and then we'll just chit-chat for who knows how long. Okay, so if I miss your message, there's a possibility that I could miss your message while I'm cooking. Just message me again, put a stop sign up, and somebody will say, hey, so-and-so had a question, and you missed it, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and put my microphone on. So when I move to the other side of the island, y'all can hear me very well, okay? Thank you all. I'm doing okay, Deku Warrior. Thank you for coming back in and joining us. You were in the last live. Thank you. Okay, I'm turning my microphones on. Listen, if I haven't said, I hope y'all are having a great day. Let me see. This person says, Kalanda. I'm new. Say my name. Say my name. <laughs> Kalanda. Welcome in. Everybody, welcome, Kalanda. <laughs> I, the thing is, I hope I said your name right. <laughs> y'all y'all make me laugh. I tell you what, I have such a great time with you all. I really do. <laughs> I'm still laughing at the one. I'm still laughing at the one that says, you better say my name. <laughs> okay, let's see here. It should be Dr. Gina. <laughs> I remember Drew. They, I don't know what happened last live. They banned him. They banned Drew for five minutes on the live. He freaked out, y'all. He couldn't comment. <laughs> Nobody knew what happened. All right, I got the microphone on. I'm going to make my way to the other side. Get your hands impeccably clean. Derek Eats, if I didn't speak to you, hello. And hello to Janet. Cheryl Fulton. All right, let me get my apron on. We're going to rock and roll. Cabbage is on the menu. We're going to have a fun time making it. If you never made cabbage before, I'm telling you, this is one recipe you are totally going to love. Oh, let me turn this down so I can make sure my apron is right. There we go. He is back. Yes, he is. Okay. <laughs> Derek said he 
bet he, he, <laughs> they teleported you to the timeout. I know. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's flip, flip the camera around. Let's cook. All right, if at any time the lighting is not right, let, let us know and we can fix it for you, okay? <laughs> she needs to be called the food doctor. My goodness. That's the first time I heard that. That's interesting. Oh, LaCrease. Okay. Okay. I'm doing okay. You watch all the time. You just now found out how to use the chat. Well, I'm so glad that you're in here. And I'm glad you figured out how to use the chat. That's great. It's, it can be a little confusing because you click on the chat button and nothing happens, right? So that, that right there is like, what, what's happening, right? But now they put the chat button, it doesn't even work anymore. So now where the comments are, where you would regularly comment on a video, that's where you would press to jump into the live. So I'm so glad that you know. You said, you haven't said hi to me. Derek, you said hi, I think. Helen, hello, Raymond is back, hello. Deborah, hello, Eula is back, hello. All right, let's go ahead and get our hands nice and clean, and then we're going to get a bunch of stuff started, okay? Always making sure your hands are clean so that you do not pass bacteria to your family, friends, and loved ones. Because something simple as your hair, your belt buckle, the chair, anything can have bacteria on it, right? So when we decide to wash our hands, then you prevent getting your family sick, right? So that's why I'm constantly washing my hands, and I tell y'all what, my hands is dry as the dry as a piece of cardboard right now. But I tell you what, it's so worth it when you think about keeping your family safe, you know, when you're in the kitchen cooking. You gotta make sure that that doesn't separate. How is Sonia? I talked to her. She's okay. She's actually, she's out of town, okay? Remember I told y'all she had an emergency. She's out of town and she's with her mom, but um, she did tell me that it would be a while before she came back into um, the lives. But, but she's coming back for sure. I can assure you all, I talked to her today, okay? But she's doing fine, okay? Yeah, thank you, Deborah. She said, keep the hands clean. Okay, so now it's really your choice to put bell peppers into your cabbage um, if you want to, okay? Um, I feel like bell peppers gives a beautiful color to your cabbage, and I feel like it puts great nutrients into the cabbage, and then it gives it a nice flavor. Okay, so if you're that person that wants to put the red and green bell pepper into your recipe, go ahead. Because like I said, I, I love putting bell I don't always put bell peppers and onions in my, or, or yeah, in onions, into my cabbage. I did not always do it, but I like to do it now. Okay, so we're going to be putting potatoes into our cabbage today. Um, if you don't want to put potatoes into your cabbage, I can show you a different way as well. Most of the time, I don't actually put the potatoes in the cabbage. I cook them on the side, but we eat the potatoes with the cabbage. So I think that's what I'm gonna do in this tutorial today. You did lift 180 pounds, my goodness. Okay, all right, so I got all my spices. The spices today is gonna to be salt and pepper, garlic powder, if you want to use some onion powder, you can. If you want to use chicken broth, you can. But if you don't have broth, you can just simply use water and just season it very well and it'll make up for the flavor of the broth, okay? So now, I want to show you all, the first thing that I want to do, I want to show you all how I like to cut my cabbage. Cutting of the cabbage Everybody likes to do it different. 
You might want to shred yours. I like, I, I, I'm just going to show you. It's better to show you than to just try to explain it, okay? So, I have pre-washed these off. All right? So let's start off with this one. Is everybody doing okay and ready to go? Now, now you will see some, if you see some of these and they feel a little soft on the outside, get rid of it because if it's soft, you, you don't want it, okay? I've already taken off a couple of layers, but there might be some layers that have some bruises. Just get rid of it, okay? Oh, you made cabbage, let me see, cabbage, carrots, and potatoes, that sounds good. Now see, I don't like ca carrots. <laughs> I don't like carrots, y'all. Okay, let me see, hold on y'all, I'm looking at something real quick. Uh, what do you think? This one? Huh? huh? It looks great. This one, this one. You got, okay, get, you see the hanger? Or is that a piece, hold on y'all. Is this glass from the uh, refrigerator? Mm -hmm. You gotta move it so it don't get broken. Okay, turn your earpiece down so we can't hear it. Okay, so what you have to do is this. You have to come put that on the cabinet. Okay? Now, remember I told you, you should, don't put that on there. Remember I told you you should have did this before, I mean after. Okay, y'all, so let's get started on the cabbage. Here's how it goes. You put jalapenos in your popcorn. Oh, Miss Karen, how different. So, are you, Miss Karen, let me ask you this. Are you pouring like a cheese sauce or dipping your popcorn? If you're, Miss Karen, the only way I can understand the jalapenos on your popcorn is if you, are you dipping your popcorn in a cheese sauce like nachos and then you have jalapenos or you just put jalapenos on your popcorn? You gotta clarify that for me so I can understand. <laughs> you like hot sauce in your popcorn? Is it great? <laughs> y'all, I don't know what, what type of language y'all talking today. Okay, so here's how I like to do it. Check me out. Okay, here's the core. We don't want the core. Heck no, we don't want this core, okay? The core um, is too hard to eat. Although there are people, um, and my mom used to be one of them, when she would cut the cabbage off of the core, she sprinkled a little bit of salt on that core and she'd bite it. And she'd say, you want to taste it? I tasted it and I thought it was okay. You know, wasn't nothing to write home about. But there are some people that like to eat the core. You don't want it in your cabbage stuff. So now, I'm holding on to the core and I'm tucking my digits in. These are my digits. I'm tucking them in so I don't cut nothing off, okay? Let's get through the cabbage like we just did. So let's do the same thing here, always tucking your digits in, okay? Let's go all the way around it, okay? How simple. And then this right here is the core. The core, I don't want it. I don't want it, okay? If you want it, you cut it up, put it into a soup. Absolutely, you can do that, okay? All right. All right, let me see what the message is. Some people make cabbage soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I just said, Derek. You can take that, put it in the soup now. Okay, so look at this. We're left with this wedge here, right? So now, I'm gonna come this way and chop it in such a manner to where this is what my pieces of cabbage look like, okay? But there are people that want to shred it. And if you're that person, shredding it is just gonna be like this where you cut real, real thin pieces and this is what you achieve, okay? That's more so on the lines of if you are making homemade coleslaw. Okay, so let's get this cabbage into a bowl, a strainer, whatever you're gonna cook with. Um, because what I wanna do, although I've washed the outside off, I wanna wash the inside of the cabbage again. Because it is leaves like this, and possibly you could have some mud or some sand in it. 
right? So I always like to double rinse it. You're just going to rinse it with cold water, nothing special. Just rinse it a couple times, maybe one or two times, and that's it, okay? So I don't know if you can see, I'm just setting it into here. That's going to be my cooking device today. My wok, it's a flat, it's a stainless steel flat bottom cooking wok. And they say they emphasize on the flat bottom because otherwise if you get the kind that goes up like this, it will wobble on you if you purchase the wrong kind. Because it's meant for like the Chinese restaurant where they have that big thing that they set their wok on and the fire comes up. That's what that type of wok is made for. But at home you have to have a flat bottom wok. Okay? Ah, it's just food for thought I guess. <laughs> I don't know if anybody was even interested in what I was talking about. <laughs> it is interesting to me because one time I purchased a wok that was not flat bottom. And I thought, why the heck? I can't use I had to throw it away. <laughs> I had to throw it away. Turn the um sides here. Hello. Um, uh, turn the fan on and make sure the air is on, please. Y'all, it never fails me. Every time I get in this kitchen, it, it never fails. It starts getting hot in the kitchen. I bring the heat. I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm assuming I bring the heat to the kitchen. <laughs> Is Saj okay? Is Saj here? Is that what you're saying? My purpose for using two heads of cabbage is my family loves cabbage. And I can eat this for days in on out, right? I can eat this for a couple days because that's how much I love it. So I always make sure that I make between one and a half heads of cabbage and two maybe. Right? But if you're just cooking for, I don't know, you and someone else, you don't have to use two. Just use one because otherwise you'll have a whole lot left over. Little bit, how you doing? You want a recipe for pickled beets, cabbage with cornflakes, ain't no way. I don't know where you're gonna get, you're gonna get that recipe from here. Y'all tell a little bit, I don't make that. <laughs> ah, y'all pulling my leg, I know you are. I know you are. <laughs> oh, you, you saute your, Okay, you saute your cabbage in a wok. Yep, that's, that's great. When you saute it, you're able to control how soft it gets. You know, you might want to keep it a little crunchy, and then you can get somewhat of like, what, what, what's the word? Like a charred flavor from your wok, right? So I'm going to put a little bit more cabbage in, and I think that's all I'm going to need. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the was the heat was the air on? I turned okay, then we're gonna talk about our meats, our smoked meats that we're gonna use. Somebody in the background may ask the question, Gina, could I put something like um um uh, a ham hock in here, smoked turkey? Absolutely you could. But when you think about smoked ham hocks or smoked turkey. Something like that takes forever in a day to cook, right? But you could put it in there and guess what it would do? It would bring you some great flavor. It would taste delicious. The only thing you would have to do prior to, you know, starting your recipe is boil the ham hock or the smoked turkey. Boil it for about an hour. And after you boil it for about an hour, then you could turn around and put that because it's begun to get nice and tender. Then you can add it to your cabbage and it'll bring so much flavor. But you have to start that cooking process off, um, because if you don't cook it first, the cabbage will be a mushy mess before that smoked meat um, is done. Or, or by the time the cabbage is done, your meat would never be done. So you cook the meat ahead of time. Okay, you can put that over there right in the middle and put this pillow right here. 
the chair over here? The chair right here. Turn that fan on me, please. Okay. We need over a hundred more thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. All right. So now we got some smoked sausage here. This is just a name brand that I like. When I think about smoked sausage, um, I really, I really love this name brand here. It's got great taste. Now I know that my dad likes Hillshire Farm beef, but I like the Eckridge all meat. Now. There's two ways you can do this sausage. This sausage is flavorful. There's all kind of flavor in here. You can turn around, cut the sausage up, slice it, dice it, whatever you'd like to do. Okay? You can cut it up and throw it in there right now. Is it going to let flavor off? Yes. Or you could turn around and fry the sausage like I'm going to do today and create an amazing flavor onto the sausage. Because if you fry the sausage and you get that dark char, ever seen like a, a charred hot dog that has that dark color, it makes it taste delicious, right? That's what we're gonna create on these sausages. Or you could say, well, what if I wanna put this right here in there without cooking it and then I cook this? You can do it, I've done it before, okay? So I've done it all those different type of ways and I love each way I do it. Even if I just throw them in without charring it, it tastes good. So I just want to throw those options out there to you all. I'm not putting onion in my cabbage today. There are a lot of times where I'll put onion in, but I just felt like no onion today. No onion today, I don't want to go crying off of the onions, that's just a little too much. So if you want to put onions in, you get you some in there, okay? I want to grab a pan, okay? And I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil in my pan, and I want to start cooking the sausage, okay? So you see my pan that I have here? And don't have the sausage on top of each other. If you have it on top of each other, it's just going to sting, right? So try to make sure that each piece is touching the bottom of the pan. I'm literally just going to put about a tablespoon of oil into my pan. That's all, not a whole lot. Okay, you'll see me. Boom. That's it. It's going to help to create a beautiful char. I'm going to turn this heat up onto, let's just say medium. Let me wipe this down, and I'm gonna show you how much liquid that you're gonna need for your cabbage. Now, if you were talking to my dad, my dad would tell you, oh, you don't need, you don't need the liquid, which he's right, he is right. But if you're the person that wants to taste that pot liquor like I do, then you're gonna need to put some liquid in there, okay? So let's rinse this off. And then you're going to grab your chicken broth or your water, okay? I most likely will be using chicken broth and water. So let's rinse this off in cold water and I'll be right back in a jiffy, okay? I ain't going too far, I'm right here. That cabbage got to be fire, thank you. Yes, it is, thank you. I'm just rinsing my cabbage off. It is, it's going to taste good. You bet it is. Oh, wait. All right, just a quick rinse of the cabbage, making sure we get out, you know, any mud that may be in there, any sand that's in there. And I did purposely put some water in here, okay? Thank you for the little hearts that's going up. I love when y'all do that. I, a lot of people don't know what that little thing is. It's to make happy faces or, you know, the party popper or the heart. Y'all, listen, I'm not, I can't get this open. I, I might have to go tell my husband I can't get the, I can't get it open. Hold on, y'all. This is nuts. Okay, you want to try to open it? There you go. You love, yes, Ron, absolutely. Okay, we got it open. Don't, don't, don't sweat it. No stressing out. This is 32 ounces, and I want the whole 32 ounces. 
when you're using a bra, let me tell you, let me tell you, it's okay to use low sodium. Low sodium broths taste good too. They do, it just is less sodium. They taste good and they're healthy for you. If you wanted to use um, any other type of broth other than the chicken broth, you could use a beef broth. You really could, especially if you're using beef sausage, right? Um, you, if you got vegetable broth, use it, okay? So if you look at the bottom of my pan, I literally have about probably this much liquid, right? And, and that's what I'm looking for. And um, when the cabbage cooks, it's kind of like greens. You know how I've always told y'all, when it comes to greens, greens have water in it. So as this cooks, it's going to shrink down. And it's going to create a liquid in here. Okay, so, so now we got our liquid in there. I want y'all to season. Garlic. If you want to put onion powder, please do so. We're going to put some black pepper in there. Not too much. All right, and we're going to put some salt. Okay, if you can't use salt, don't use it. I just may grab my onion. Let's see, I'm going to grab my onion powder. Onion powder, where are you if I were looking for you? There it is. Oh! I got something on my cabinet that I need to wipe off on the handle of my cabinet. Okay, so I decided to put some onion powder in here for great flavor. All right? And take a look at these beautiful sausages. They're cooking up and literally already the house smells amazing. You can smell that beautiful sausage. As I use ingredients, I like to put ingredients, push them away from me. So I know that that ingredient has been used and it just helps me to remember what I've done and what I haven't done already. Right, you understand? So as, since I use my spices, I'm setting them over there, okay? Yeah, but now when you're making greens or cabbage, um, I like to season them a couple times. So I will have to go back over there to re-season. We're going to take this cabbage and go put it onto a medium heat. I would cook it here, but since this is such a big pot and steam will be created, I don't want the steam to be in the way of my face and the camera. So we're going to take this cabbage and put it back here. Okay, I'm going to put it onto a medium heat and we're just going to let it go. Just let it go for the time being, okay? So now, growing up, when my dad made cabbage, we always had cabbage, and he would put white rice underneath the cabbage. That's how he served it. So white rice on the plate first, cabbage on the top of that, and it was like match made in heaven. We're going to do that today. You can use brown rice. Brown rice is delicious. But also, I want to talk about the potatoes, OK? We're going to be using some potatoes, right? I do want to cut these before we get to the potatoes, okay? So let's just cut these first. I know! I <laughs> Y'all, they give me the hugest, most beautiful vegetables at this store, and I love it. Because you all always say, well, wow, that's a pretty so-and-so. Gina, your vegetables are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. All right, ooh, this sausage smells good. I just wanna go in and take a piece right now. All right, let's chop up some bell peppers real quick. If you are the person, go give me a paper towel. If you are the person that um, wants to use onion, you're gonna cut up a little bit of onion to throw in, okay? Gina, was your dad a chef? No, my dad was a correctional officer. <laughs> My dad was a correctional officer, but he could cook his butt off. You hear me? Absolutely, my dad could cook, y'all. Oh, wait. When I tell y'all my dad could cook, he had some amazing recipes. And he, he cooked often. He cooked often. He did. My dad was a correctional officer, and he started as a correctional officer in 1972. 
1972. That's when he became a correctional officer. <laughs> to cook um, as it cooks down a little bit we'll go in and stir it because right now if I stir it everything gonna fall out the pan okay so now let's check in on our sausage when we put the sausage in here there's gonna be a little tiny bit of oil in your pan we take in that oil and we're gonna drizzle it in the cabbage and that right there that's all good flavor don't throw the oil from the sausage away Good flavor. Oh, yeah. Beautiful sausage. Ooh, come on. Uh-huh. Look at that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all flavor. I, I want to eat one of these right now. I tell you what, if I wasn't on camera, I would have ate three of them. <laughs> I would have. Mmm, <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. My goodness. Miss Y says, yes, yum, it looks good, Gina. Yes, it does. And you really don't have to wait until each and every single one in this pan gets charred. You don't. You know, just get some char onto them. It's going to be great flavor. And, you know, stir them around a little bit in such a manner. We're going to keep these veggies right here because later we're coming back for them. We're worn out, you know, if you want onions, if you, if you put onions in yours, don't put a lot. We don't want the onions to be the star, right? We want it to be an afterthought, okay? That puts in flavor. Okay, so take a look, y'all. One more time at the sausage. Ooh, wait. I'm pouring it in the pan with the oil. Ooh, you don't know what that just did to me. My goodness. Ooh, it looks so good, okay? So now, if you can grab me, I need you to grab me the lid and put it on there for me, please. The lid for the cabin. Okay. All right, and, and wash that. Okay, y'all, so now, we are going to talk about the potatoes. The potatoes is very, very, very important. You gonna get the lid? <laughs> okay. So now, when you're making cabbage, 
or you may have seen somebody make cabbage. You may have seen somebody make cabbage, and they, and they put the little tiny potatoes in their cabbage, which is great. The little red new potatoes, or the Yukon gold potatoes. They're so tiny. The skin is so soft and supple. You don't have to peel them. Hold on, y'all. I need to cough. <coughs> Let me wash my hands. So those potatoes are so little, you don't have to cut them unless they're a really big one. And you don't have to peel them because the skin is so soft and supple, right? But since I don't have those potatoes, I just have regular old Idaho potatoes, right? I'm going to show you what I like to do, okay? Oh, I'm going to show you. Because it's really interesting. Um, if you are the person that wants to cook your potatoes in the cabbage, you have to wait until the potatoes are almost done. Okay? The reason why I say this is because your potatoes are only going to take 20 to 25 minutes to cook. So if this cabbage cooks longer than that, your potatoes will turn into mush, okay? So I'm going to show you a way that I like to do where I don't have to worry about that. I like to make a potato that my grandma used to make. She used to call them quarter potatoes, quarter potatoes. And she called it quarter potatoes is because she would quarter the potatoes. And here's how she did that. Be careful, Debbie Parker, says Karen. So we're going to peel this baby just like so. Let me turn this burner off. We're going to peel it. So I hope you all understood what I was speaking of when I said um, put the potatoes in the last 25 minutes of the cooking process. Or they'll overcook. Putting them in right now, they're overcooked. They'll, they'll be mush. So here's how my grandma would take our potatoes and quarter them. You peel it, of course, okay? And then that right there is what I consider to be a quarter. We're gonna wash these off as well, okay? So no worries. I know somebody in the background right now screaming. I'm gonna wash them off, <laughs> all right? So now let's peel these. You only need to do a couple because once you cut your couple of potatoes into quarters, you have a nice amount. And what I like to do, I like to give everybody two or three on their cabbage or on their plate, and it just fills everybody up, and everybody loves these here potatoes. So now watch me one more time. Come on in, y'all. Just like so. Okay. How about that? This quarters. Now, Grandma, I believe she used butter, salt, and pepper. I use butter, salt, and pepper, garlic, and parsley flakes. Look, listen, when you put the garlic on there, it sends it up like a whole nother notch, right? And then you put the parsley flakes in as your garnish, and these potatoes can stand up and get some of the best of them. You cook them until they're fork tender. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. Do your thing, Gina, says Patrice. Well, thank you. Hey, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I, I really want to show you all a great time today and a great recipe. Yes, and I can do it with God on my side. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going I'm to keep on, y'all. Listen, I'm just getting started. Just getting started. All right, so I think we have one more potato. I may do one more potato because I love these. I think I'll do one more potato. And like I said, we'll rinse them off. I'm coming back to the comment section here in just a second to see how you all are doing. What, what's everybody talking about? Thank you, Christy. Christy Fowler says, you always show us great recipes. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. All right, I think... We can withstand one more potato. I, I don't, okay. I was going to say, I don't really have a big.
big one in there. Okay. So now, I have a pan over there on the stove that you may can see. I'm going to fill it up with water. Anytime you're cooking potatoes, you start off with cold water, right? And you salt your water. Try your best to make all of these potatoes the same size. When you make them, this, turn, that, turn that earphone down. When you make the potatoes the same size, um, they all cook at the same time. You don't want little teeny tiny ones in there, right? And then you got a big one in there, and the big ones don't get done, but the little ones are done. You don't want that, right? Okay, so let me show you my pan that I have. I'm going to rinse the potatoes in this pan. Okay, I'm just going to rinse them in cold water. Cook them in cold water for about 25 minutes. Usually 25 minutes, um, you can go in with your fork and they're nice and fork tender. Okay? So let me get to boiling these. I'm going to rinse them first. And then we'll leave them in cold water. Once again, I'm just going to say that again. Rinse them about three times until your water runs clear. When you first rinse potatoes off, they're going to have a cloudy water, right? Rinse all that starch off. At least that's what I like to do. Right? I'm going to fill the water on top of the potatoes, salt the water, and turn them on medium. My rice only takes 11 minutes to cook. So, since the rice only takes 11 minutes to cook, we'll cook the rice last. Okay? The potatoes are down here. The water's right above it. Okay? So, we got to salt the water, right? How much salt? Just get you some in there to give it some flavor, okay? Just like so. How simple. How simple. This recipe doesn't keep you in the kitchen forever and a day. No, it doesn't. It looks like it once it's done, but, but mm -mm. you're not going to be in here all day. My Holy King, welcome back in. Saj, welcome back in. Stacy Jackson, it is going to be so good. It is. Yes, it is. I'm going to grab a um, Ziploc bag, and I want to put my bell peppers. Because, see, I can use all this late, on, on a later date, right? And then I have some cabbage left over. I'll use that on a later date. So this is going to go in the refrigerator. Nothing is going to get wasted. Can't wait to make this recipe, Miss White. Okay, you're going to make it, and I promise you, you're going to love it. It's an easy, quick, and simple recipe. Now, one thing you guys are going to see when you're seeing, when you're watching Jeannie Young in this kitchen, I'm cleaning up as I'm going, putting things back as I'm going. And when you do that, I promise you, you're going to be stress-free in your kitchen, you're going to be stress-free. Because otherwise, we would have like a mess everywhere, right? Having a mess everywhere, all kind of dishes in the sink, and having all your spices out when you don't need them, that is a way to get stressed out. Hold on, y'all, I'm coming right back into the equation. But uh, as you clean up as you go, you're going to be happy. You're going to be happy. All that's going to be left to do is say a good prayer and eat. Right? Absolutely. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm ready. I'm coming back into the picture. We got cabbage going. We've sauteed up our meat. We've chopped all our veggies, and you should have your potatoes going. Okay? So this is going to go in the last couple minutes of the cooking process, okay? And then I'll get a pan out so I can make rice. Um, I think I'll use this pan here. My rice, if you didn't know, my rice is a boil in a bag rice. <laughs> In the boil in the bag rice, I just simply put water in my pan, enough water to cover the bag, right? And we salt the water. 
Somebody had asked a great question one day. They said, Gina, so why are you putting salt in the water and the rice is in the bag? And I brought that bag really close to the camera and I said, because the rice is able to get that flavor because there's little tiny holes in that bag. You know, that allows for the salt to soak in through the rice. Okay, you may not see on, on camera those little tiny holes that's in the back. So once the water comes up to a boil, I salt to the course and put the rice into the bag and boil it for 11 minutes. 11 minutes, pour the water off, open the bag up, and it's light, airy, and fluffy and just beautiful every time. That's why I choose that rice because it's so simple to make. Okay. Thank you for the hearts, and that's Beverly. Thank you for coming in and joining. Oh, I appreciate all those hearts in the comment section. Blessings to everyone. That's blessed for life. Thank you for coming in today. Jackie, hello. I'm doing okay. Oh, you want, you want to know how Wanda's doing? Okay. Okay, where's the potato wedge? Okay, let me, let me see your question, because I'm not understanding. What did you say? Where the potato wedge or quarter? Nancy, I don't understand your question. You said where the potato wedge or quarter. I like to call them either or. You can call them either or. We cut them into wedges. We also cut them into quarters. So how, whatever you want to call it, that's what we did today. <laughs> Do you want to see it? I like light and fluffy. Yes, yes, yes. See, see, a lot of people struggle with making rice. So many people struggle with making rice. And I can totally understand it because I feel like rice can be a little difficult. But then I also feel like a lot of people use a rice cooker which a rice cooker has never been something that I use. So when I see that boil in the background, y'all, I love it. Because you can cook it as long as you want. If you want a softer rice, if you want your rice to be light, fluffy, and airy, and single pieces, you know, this rice, it, it don't never fail me. <laughs> it's just beautiful. You cook brown rice, they have a brown rice that way. It cooks up beautiful every time. Gina, Derek wants to know if you added garlic. If you added garlic to this dish. Yes, I did. Um, here it is right here. I added the garlic, salt and pepper, and I added onion powder. So we added garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper. Okay? That's the seasonings. But let's just say you love... Um, a certain seasoning and you just want to put it in there, absolutely, you can put it in there. It's going to be good, okay? So now let's talk about something. Yep, I'm answering it, yep. Oh, you do, Mildred. Mother says I love to boil in the background. So listen, listen, y'all. Here's what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tuesday, June 6th. Gina Young is going to be over on the other channel. And guess what I'm making for you all? I'm making it for the whole world. I'm going to show you all how easy it is to make delicious. And I, I have to emphasize delicious. So I'm spelling it with all capital letters. <laughs> okay? I'm going to show you all how to make vegan. Vegan baked macaroni and cheese. It's going to be something interesting that you definitely want to see. Oh, it's going to be vegan. It's going to be delicious. So make sure that video is going to post tomorrow. You want to check it out? Tell the whole world. Tell anybody you know. Gina's over there making vegan mac and cheese. It's going to be a turn up. Okay? It does. Miss Kara says, wow, that sounds interesting. Oh, it's 
gonna be interesting. Yes, it is. It's gonna be fun too. So I can't wait. Debbie says, this sounds good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, my Holly King, it's gonna be vegan. It's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna put some water into my drink here. One second, y'all. Do we have any um, bottles of water? Can you get me one? Give me a bottle of water, please. At this point, I can smell the cabbage. The cabbage smells beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's like you can smell the cabbage. You can smell the peppers, the sausage, everything cooking up right now smells so good right now. Oh. You can, Cat Slat says, I can't wait until everything is done. Oh, listen, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat with this recipe. I grew up on cabbage and I loved it. And what my sister wouldn't eat, if she wouldn't eat something, on her plate, I ate it. <laughs> I know, she didn't want the liver. She didn't want the liver, I ate it. She didn't want her mac and cheese, I ate it. <laughs> yeah, what vegan baked mac and cheese? You, yes, Jackie, you said you're gonna watch? Okay, okay, you're, you're in for a treat. Hello, Kathy. Does my sister cook as well? She's not a cook. She's not a fan of cooking. She's not a fan of cooking. Never has been a fan of cooking. I'm, she, she can cook though, <laughs> but she's not a fan of cooking. <laughs> Sasha's laughing at me. What happened? <laughs> You 
this too. Yeah, I can understand that. Susan says, Drew, you never heard of that? Watermelon moonshine is more of your speed. Okay, that's Robert saying that. Okay. Your sibling said watermelon has no flavor. <laughs> you said they must be tripping. <laughs> Some people, here's the thing. Here's what I would actually like to say. Hold on, y'all. I'm just washing this pan that I cooked my sausage in. Um, some people will say that watermelon has no flavor because maybe they haven't had a sweet one, right? And here, I always like to say, try something a second time because that second time you might go out and purchase the one that has a really, really deep red flavor, or I mean a deep red color. And when you see those ones, those are the ones that's really sweet. Right? But when you see the ones that's just light pink, right? The watermelon's just light pink. They normally don't have a lot of flavor. But if you can find them and they are deep red in the inside, those are the ones that's nice and sweet. So I can kind of understand where they're coming from. You just have to tell them to taste it again. Now, what if it's the watermelons that you can't see the flesh? Because sometimes your local market will cut them and you can see. Like, ooh, there's a, a really red one. I want that one. If um, the watermelon is not already cut for you and it's whole, you want to look for the spot underneath where it looks like it's been setting on the ground. If your watermelon has like a, a light yellow or orange tint to the bottom of it, that means it's going to be nice and sweet because they picked it a little bit later. I've learned that and it's true. It's interesting. Okay, Shirley Clark says, me too, Debbie. I enjoy cooking more too after watching Gina. Thank you. Oh, that's great, y'all. That's what I'm here for. I want to show, I want to show the world great recipes. Mm. I do. Gina, my watermelon was rotten and we just bought it. Oh my goodness. You said you threw it down a <laughs> you threw it down a hill. <laughs> you were so mad that, that thing was rotten, wasn't it? <laughs> my potatoes are looking good. So now what I want to do, we're gonna come in with the camera and give our cabbage a nice stir around. And so now this is going to give us the opportunity to uh, mix in those spices, mix in the sausage and those bell peppers right now. Okay, so that's what we're getting ready to do when my cameraman comes back. Oh, Valencia says, I mean, Gina makes you want to cook. Yes, thank you. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I want to provide easy, quick, simple, delicious recipes that, like she said, make you want to cook. All right, come, come on. I need you. look at this you can also purchase it off Amazon so don't get too close because we do have some steam you're gonna hear the vent come on um, in the background because I want to soak up some of that steam so we don't steam the camera so at this point I'm pushing beautiful spices in there that meat is really letting off some amazing flavor into our cabbage just like so let's let it continue to cook take a look at over here at the potatoes. 
potatoes are doing good. Ooh, wait, you better make yourself. You're gonna have to make a teeny young step. Yes. So here's what I'm gonna do. Since we're cooking and our food's not ready, in a few minutes, I'll check on my potatoes. I'm gonna show you how I like to season them after I drain them. And then we'll get our rice going. But for now, I'm gonna grab my butter out. I'm gonna come around in front of the camera and talk to you guys for a little bit. I, do I see another? Let me see. You know, sugar cane, the first fruit, it's a long stick that has sugar inside. I haven't had the actual stick, but I have had sugar cane sugar. I haven't had the stick like went to Jamaica or anything to taste that. No. Thomas has a turkey tenderloin. Can he cut it into cutlets? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Great question. Okay, so Thomas has the turkey tenderloin, and he wants to know, can he cut it into sticks? I mean, into cutlets. Yes, you can. Um, because I was thinking if I wasn't able to find the turkey cutlets, then that's what I was going to have to do, is buy the tenderloin and cut them. So, great question. had y'all lopsided guys okay let me get the light out of my eyes and y'all can see me we okay all right everybody doing okay in the background how's everybody let me see where the messages are. Gina, cabbage is looking so delicious. Thank you. Oh, you like the red? Y'all, I don't like red. Y'all say that every, thank you. <laughs> Y'all say that every time I have red on, I can't stand the color red. <laughs> oh, you did, you had a great time at the family reunion. That's beautiful. <laughs> Doing good, Gina, says Saj. Okay, that's great. Let's see, so Terry says, Gina, I learned from you to season. Last, best advice ever, and thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, Ron Wilson in this chat, he'll be the first one to tell you. Gina showed me how to season, and since I know how to season, it just makes everything so much better. So thank you. Gina, I love your outfit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Jay says, have you cooked yet? Yes. I've cooked and we're kind of just waiting on things to, you know, finish cooking. We're going to check back in on our potatoes and we got cabbage going. We're going to make some rice here in a little bit. Gina, how's it going with the cabbage? Little bit, it looks like it's going pretty good. I uh, see Ron says, yep, that was his first lesson. He's talking about seasoning. They annoying and snoring like they worked all day. Do you use red pepper flakes in your cabbage? Nancy, you can. I feel like um, if you have somebody in your family that loves um, you know, a little bit of heat, go ahead and put some red pepper flakes in there. It's just going to add additional flavor. But if you have somebody like me that don't want the spice, 
then you may just want to put a little bit in, and have that red pepper flakes on the side so that they can add it, you know, when they make their plate. I am Valencia. Oh my goodness. Gina's wearing my favorite color. It ain't my favorite color. <laughs> Gina, I learned how to clean up also as I go. Yes. Let me see who's saying that. Lynette. Okay, yeah. Here's what I was thinking for Saturday. Oh, no meat. You finally, Kathy finally found the Maggie Pollo. Okay. That's great. So now, uh, here, here's what I had in mind for Saturday. I was thinking that Saturday, I could show you all. Gina, I made your lasagna stuffed shells. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness, say it again for the people in the background. <laughs> Thank you, that's awesome. I love to hear that. So now, um, what the heck was I getting reset? Oh, for Saturday. I was thinking that I wanted to make um, orange chicken. Like the Asian orange chicken. Christopher, the lasagna stuffed shells. You got to check the recipe out. I made it last week. It was such a turnout. The recipe was astonishing. It was so delicious. You wouldn't even believe how delicious the recipe was. Okay, Thomas says yum to the orange chicken. You just had some orange chicken, okay. Okay, oh yes, and it sounds good. You know, okay, okay, okay. So listen, you never had orange chicken, Glenda? Okay, my Holy King says never had it either. So. Um, it's an Asian chicken, right? And after you fry it in this beautiful batter, y'all listen, you're gonna fry it, you cut the chicken up into pieces, you put it into this amazing batter, you fry it, right? And then you set your chicken aside and you make the sauce. It's like a sweet sauce. It has an orange flavor. It's kind of reddish in color, um, but it is absolutely amazing. It tastes good. So now I am pretty sure that's what I'm making on Saturday. Uh, you're gonna wanna be here. You're gonna be, you're gonna wanna be here Saturday because that's what I'm gonna do. Yes, orange juices and the sauce, Drew. Yes, real orange juice. We're we're not skip we're not skipping the real stuff that what you're going what you're supposed to do. Oh, oh you always wanted to learn how to make it, Renee. I got you. I got you. We're doing it on Saturday. And it will be 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What is for Wednesday? Penny says, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue, and I can't sit here and tell y'all it's too far away for me to know, because, <laughs> because I'm already telling y'all about what I'm doing Saturday. <laughs> what kind of oranges? Any kind of oranges? I'm most likely going to get the navel oranges. Na they call it a navel orange because when you lift it upside down, it looks like there's a navel to it. If you didn't know, that's why they call it that. But it really any kind of orange. I don't know if you'd want to use like the little cuties because they're just too little. They're not going to give you enough. But here's the thing. If you got an orange juice like in your refrigerator, drinking orange juice, you can definitely use that. I may use orange juices in my refrigerator. But I'm going to buy fresh oranges because I want to use the fresh oranges as a garnish. And I also want to use some orange zest to put into my sauce. Ah, listen. Yo, listen here. I want to check on my potatoes. I'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back. I ain't going far.
potatoes are done. And since the potatoes are done, I'm gonna show you what I like to do special to these potatoes. Okay, so easy, so delicious. This is gonna be probably your most favorite way to make potatoes Gina Young style. Check me out. Okay, come on y'all. What's in the black machine? The black machine is our, um, is our, remember we purchased that for our water? It's blinking because we, we, um, we need to put a new water in. So we used all the water, it'll blink for us and let us know that we need a new water. And the water is about this big in there, right? So we've used all that water for tea and coffee and stuff like that. We just need to put a new one in, okay? It's made, the name brand is Primo, P-R-I-M-O. So take a look at the potatoes. I know, why be careful about the orange juice? Um, let me know what you're talking about here, okay? Okay. Food is almost done. Here's what I like to do. Check me out. Please check me out. Onion powder, nice and lightly. You, you can put onion and garlic, okay? Garlic powder, just like so. I'm not going to stir these. Guess why I'm not going to stir them? Because I don't want to break them up, okay? Garlic powder and a nice amount of it. Black pepper, just a little bit. You don't, wanna, you don't want your guests to be sneezing. <laughs> You don't want to make them sneeze. Look at that, right? Salt. Okay. Like I said, but when my grandma made her, she just put salt, pepper, and butter. Okay? I'm going to put salt. I like to do it in my fingertips because it helps me to disperse it in such a way better than the shaker does. When the shaker, when you use the shaker bottle, it just goes wherever you don't want it to go. When I have it in my fingertips, I'm able to strategically place the salt or whatever spice it is how I want it, okay? All right, check me out. There's our spices. Uh, now, the butter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This recipe, y'all, is just the best. Butter your favorite butter, whatever kind of butter you like. It's not gonna get stirred on here. Why you ain't gonna stir it? Well, it's gonna melt. It's gonna melt onto the potatoes and then all into the pan, right? And then your potatoes will be sitting in a seasoned butter. It's gonna be seasoned because we put all those beautiful seasonings onto our potatoes. And at some point, we can take our pan and just kind of shake it a little bit we're gonna cover this to let the butter melt on top of the potatoes, okay? Now, my mom made something sort of like this and she called hers parsley potatoes. And I believe that she just put salt, pepper, and butter and parsley flakes. Okay, so that's how that goes, look at that. You need to use a whole stick of butter. I know. <laughs> if you don't wanna use a whole stick, you don't have to. Okay, look at me. <laughs> oh, girl, you got to be kidding me. So you mean you take these potatoes and you put it on top of the cabbage when you serve it? Right, that's how I do it. Or I just put it on the side of the plate. Cover this up. Let the potatoes steam and uh, steam the butter and get it nice and melted. Okay? So I'm going to put my spices back. But I will be using these spices again to re-season up my cabbage that's almost done. But I do have to make some water for my rice. Let's turn this on so I can have rice as well. Okay, the cabbage is looking good. I'd like for you all to make a trip over here so you can take a look. I'm gonna cover this up with the lid, okay? I want you all to take a look at my cabbage, okay? Hold on, I gotta 
Okay, look, listen. How's that look, y'all? Looking good, looking good. Wait, you about to make you some. Woo! Let's go ahead and season it again. Let's go ahead and season it again because we know we need to season it always two times. Garlic. Okay. Not too much black pepper. For the person that wants the red pepper flakes, get you some in there. And I'll, I'll stir it around a little later. Cover it. It's almost done. And oh, one more thing. Come back over here, y'all. I'm not trying to make you dizzy, but I, I do want to throw this in. Just put it on top. <laughs> well, you bet. We, we. Mm -hmm. You will love this recipe. I guarantee you will love this recipe. Cover my potatoes so that the butter can melt and the heat from the potatoes will melt the butter. Okay? I'm coming around. Looks so great, Christy Fowler says. Well, thank you. I love cabbage. My goodness, says Cat Slat. You better make you some, says Drew. I'm going to get me a plate, says Christopher. <laughs> Gina, do you make, let me see. Gina, do you make General Tso's chicken? I do. I do. I do. And the way, let me tell you this. Thank you, my holy king. Um, the way that I make, that I'm going to show you all, how to make this orange chicken is very, very similar to how I make my General Tso's chicken. Very, very similar. Okay? Absolutely. This message is held for review. Okay, I can't see your message. Somebody sent me something. I can't see it. But, um... Oh, he was your favorite Cajun cook? Um, um, so, so let's get back to the General Tso's. If y'all want me to do a General Tso's chicken for you, I can. I don't mind. I love to make it. It is a little bit more difficult. When I tell you General Tso's can be difficult, it can be difficult. But I can do it for you. So my purpose for choosing... The orange chicken for you all on Saturday is because it's not as complicated as General Tso's is to make. So I would like to know what Renee is talking about when she said be careful with the orange juice. Let me see what she's talking about. Yes, General Tso's on Saturday. Oh, Debbie Park says make the General Tso's. <laughs> What is um, Renee talking about? Be careful with your orange juice. What is she talking about? Gina, yes. Oh, you love gumbo. I love egg fried rice. Oh, I do too. Okay, Derek, let me read your message. It's so easy and simple to make. Yes, it is. Egg fr I love egg fried rice, y'all. Oh, I've never had cabbage and pork chops together. I think that's really interesting. That's different. Welcome back, Mildred. Okay, Miss Karen, it's similar to orange chicken, but even better. So did she ever talk about why she said, don't be careful with the orange juice? Okay, Christy Fowler said, it's good, Miss Karen. <laughs> Have you ever heard of cabbage and noodles? I, I... I don't know. I feel like I may have heard of cabbage and dumplings. Don't quote me on that. I feel like I may have heard of cabbage and dumplings. But I think it's really interesting. I think it's really interesting. Let me see what's happening to... Yes, they are very similar. Okay, 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 okay. Cabbage and noodles. Christy, I'll have to look it up because I I don't know if I've heard of it. She don't want to get the bubble guts again? No, I don't want to get the bubble guts again. <laughs> orange chicken has more of an orange flavor. It's good. 
What did I miss on how to make the cabbage? I came in a half an hour late. Well, what you can do, I think that may be Penny Fowler. Um, if you feel like you missed something, rewind this here live by pressing the red line, rewinding it backwards, and then when you feel like you've seen what you've possibly missed, then you can fast forward it back to where we currently are, or when we get off of here, you can just watch it again. Oh, you had your family bring a meal? It's called whole, what? Cabbage and noodles. Okay, Christy, I'm gonna have to look that up. I couldn't pronounce it. I couldn't pronounce it to save my life. Cabbage and noodles, okay. Oh, Christy says it's a Polish food. I, I feel like I would love it. I feel like I would love it. I love noodles. I love, what kind of noodle is it? Tell me what kind of noodle it is. That's what I'd really like to know. It does make sense, right? You would? Yes, I would make it. I would make it. I would try it. Yes, I would. I would love to try it. If you can put spinach in cabbage, you can. I wonder if you can put spinach in cabbage. Sure you can. If you want it, it's the East Coast thing. That started about a month ago. Um, Derek, have you ever seen um, me make the cabbage and I put greens in it, like collard greens? I just put a little bit in there. It's amazing, right? You could definitely do the same thing with using spinach. It would be like so delicious, you hear me? Oh, trust me, that's something I might have to try. So now, how many of you want to, do, have you all? Let me ask this question first. And then if you have not seen me make corned beef and cabbage, I wanted to show you all what kind of corned beef you could buy to put into your cabbage. Have you all seen my video for how to make corned beef and cabbage? Your favorite Chinese spot? Okay, okay. I'm, something's happening to my messages. Hold on. I'm going to have to speak to YouTube because my messages keep looking like somebody's comment is on top of a comment and it's hard to read them your sister used to make greens and cabbage together it is delicious mildred you never heard of that one renee did you ever tell me what you're talking about be careful with the orange juice oh you haven't seen it angelique says no i haven't okay so let me show you i'm gonna grab it i'm just gonna go around the corner to a pantry that we have and i'm gonna show you the type a corned beef that I put in my cabbage. This might be a recipe for those of you that don't eat pork. You like corned beef, you like beef. This corned beef is something absolutely amazing. Okay, so basically it's cooked. It comes in a can, you open your can up and you put this into your cabbage and when you make this type of cabbage, you, your whole family, the kids, Uncle Bobo, Aunt Shirley, everybody's going to love this recipe. Let me go grab some real quick. Hold on, y'all. Oh, you do? You love Spam? Uncle Bobo, I always say that, Edith. Okay. Corned beef. The corned beef comes with a little special key. If you lose this key, <laughs> or if you break it off, you gotta work like, you gotta work hard as you ever worked in your life to get this thing open. 
because it doesn't work with a can opener the way they have like a high ridge okay but it's possible to open it if you break the key off but that's how you would open it you twist all right um this corned beef is some of the best stuff since sliced bread when i tell you there's flavor packed in it it's good so when you open it up it has like a pinkish color like i said it's well done it's cooked you break it up just use your fingers you throw it in your cabbage and mm, mm, mm. talk about good when your cabbage is done it's done this will give you a new life and new flavor to your cabbage you can find it in the it doesn't have to be this name brand either you can find it in the canned food section so like where you'd find canned shrimp and clams and spam you know canned beef this is going to be there and it's good let me go put this back babies they're right there y'all see them sitting on the couch look at them ah. <laughs> they being good boys ain't they okay so Mildred says Debbie Parker fry up some corned beef and oh yes let me see corned beef and eggs put it on some toast make you slap the table I know I, I bought Mildred tell me are you talking about that type of corned beef or are you talking about the corned beef that has the little potatoes in it? Which one are you talking about? Oh, you seen them? <laughs> you said, oh, Prince of Polo. Gina, have you ever cooked curry chicken with potatoes? Yes, Jared. Jared, I have so many um, um, curry chicken videos that you could watch. Curry chicken, I even, don't quote me. I may have done a curry chicken live. I feel like I did. I feel like I did. Okay. Let me see. Gina, corn beef. Oh, the corned beef with potatoes. We love that. And my husband really loves it. He likes a fried egg, toast, and corned beef hash. I'm going to make it for him tomorrow morning. I have to. Mildred, I might send you a picture. You said, what's behind my shoulder? Nothing. But you can see that we did um, change some things around. Let's see. Remember, the couch was there. Let me move my head. The couch was there, and so now the windows is, is just open, and we can open up our curtains and our blinds. And so we moved the couch around a little bit. So things is a, a lot different. <laughs> Looking different in here, right? We just wanted to, I just wanted to do something different. Where the fish tank is there? <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I'm definitely a person that likes to switch things around. You know, sometimes you get tired of the same old stuff, the same place. Like move things around and you feel good. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I, I always like to say when I think about getting up and getting dressed and ready for the day. When you when you 
get dressed or when you take extra time to make yourself look nice, you feel good. And I feel that same way about my house. If you keep it together as much as you can and switch things around every once in a while, it's something about it that makes you feel good. <laughs> Spanish restaurant, you can definitely get it. Now, I don't know, corned beef is delicious. I wonder if you're talking about, uh, listen, I, I didn't even see the message. Are you all talking about Spanish corned beef? Spanish corned beef, guess who makes it best? <laughs> the one and only Gina Young. Yo, I make a Spanish corned beef that'll knock somebody's socks off. No cereal bowl on the water tank. Uh, uh, it's not on there today. That's so funny. Let me read your message again. And yeah, I couldn't be ghetto today. I was so ghetto yesterday. I had the cereal bowl sitting on top of the water. I was so embarrassed. I thought you had to be kidding me. <laughs> so let's talk about the Spanish corned beef. Let me tell you how you make it. He said, knock my socks off. Gina, please video your corned beef hash recipe. My late sister made the best hash, and I still haven't replicated it yet. You want me to do corned beef hash recipe? Oh, I'll have to do it for you. I'll have to do it for you. Um, oh, my Spanish or Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican corned beef. So you take that corned beef that I just showed you in the can. You're going to make you some sofrito. And I've always told you all that sofrito can consist of onions, bell peppers, all different colors bell peppers, cilantro, um, onions and garlic, some oil, um, and you could put culantro in there, but you're gonna blend it up, right? Until you have sofrito. It's very, very flavorful. So the first thing you do in the pan, you take a little bit of oil and you cook your sofrito. After doing that, you're gonna take a little tiny bit of uh, tomato sauce. And when I say it's a little tiny bit of tomato sauce, really it's just a little. You crumble up the corned beef. You cook it in the sofrito. Sofrito, that little bit of oil, um, the tomato sauce, and you make sure that your meat gets coated in everything. Then you take a pack of sazon. You put that in there. You put green, this, this recipe is nuts. You put green olives in it. And then you turn around and do something really different. You get potatoes or french fries and you fry them babies, right? Oh, listen to me. Make some white rice on the side. You take french fries or potatoes. You fry them just like you're making fried potatoes. Or uh, not fried potatoes, just like you're making french fries. The fries get stirred into the corned beef mixture. You eat it over white rice. You do put a couple of green olives in it. This recipe right here, I stand on it and it, if when I feed it to people, they say, what the, what the heck was that? They love it. So if that's something y'all would like to see, it's easy, it's, it's cheap to make, and it's so much fun to eat. Y'all, I can eat the whole pan by myself. Oh, Gina, that chicken sandwich looks Chicken salad sandwich looked smack. It was. It was. We ate some after the video. It was so good and so flavorful. My Holy King says, Gina, people go crazy. <laughs> Is that what I be saying? I say people will go nuts over your recipe. <laughs> Gina, send me some when you make it again. <laughs> Oh, sorry. He says, condolences. My condolences. Let me see. To who is it? Says 
Sazon is not salty. Nancy, Sazon is not salty. Hold on, we'll get back to that if you can remind me. Let me see who the condolences goes out to, okay? Feeware, condolences to you. I don't see your message, but may God bless over you and your family. I'm sorry to hear whatever's happening. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Fee Ware. And hopefully I'm saying the name right. But Lord, I don't know who they are. You know what they need before I even know. I pray that you just put a blessing and peace over their mind in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you along the way, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer on today in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get to see whoever's message, but I tell you what, the good Lord just heard and answered that prayer. Oh, okay. Now I see you. <laughs> All thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Listen, I love you guys. When y'all come in here, you are definitely my family. And um, I, I, I just love you. And I hate to hear, you know, when things, you know, when things happen. Oh, so you said, um, it says on salty. I promise you, it's not. It's made um, from, don't quote me, because I could totally be wrong. I believe it's made from a, um, a spice called annatto seeds, annatto, okay? And annatto has that red, oranges color, right? But it's typically used in Spanish cooking and Spanish foods, and it makes food so delicious. I love you, thank you. Okay, be safe. Um, it makes food beautiful. It gives it a great reddish, orangish, beautiful, bright color, but then it puts packed flavor into recipes. So if you haven't had um, Sazon, give it a try. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it don't have salt in it. Right, I don't want to say that to you because I believe it has salt in it. But I can tell you that it's not salty. You know, like when you taste it, like let's just say you tasted it like this, it don't have a salty taste. My Holy King says, stock, stock up on it. You're going to love it. Oh, thank you, Sh Sh Shilikia. I, I, I think that's how you say your name. And if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Absolutely. Amen. And thank you all. Oh, it's her dad. Okay. Okay. I understand. Thank you, little bit. Good night, Edith. Thank you for coming in, joining us today. Did Renee ever say what, why, why not to use the orange juice in a dish? Renee, did you ever comment? Do they have Sazon in a shaker bottle? A uh, Thomas, they do. But now I can assure you, Gina. Oh, the dad used to watch the show. Oh my goodness, had passed on, they said. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. What was your dad's name? Did he ever comment in the comment section? Did he ever comment in the comment section? Thank you, Lucy. Did your dad ever comment in the comment section and I know his name? By chance, is there any chance that he commented or did he stay out of the comment section? Yeah, I don't use it for, for curry chicken. Oh, so what I was going to say, 
I've been watching for four years now. You taught me everything I know. Thank you for everything, my best friend Isaac and I cook because of you. Jay, welcome. Hey, Jay and Isaac, welcome. Thank you for coming in and joining. I'm glad you cook because of me. Hey, listen, by the time, by time, listen, by the time y'all get down with me, you're going to be a whole cook. You and Isaac. Hey, thank you for coming in, Jay, and joining us. What I was going to say, I'm sure if he knew how to do that, but his name was Keith Spears. Okay. Oh, well, God bless his soul. And I'm, I'm sure that he is in heaven. You know, um, God bless his soul. <laughs> don't say that. I know that red. I know you don't like red, but it looks great on you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, let's get back to the size zone in the shaker bottle. I'm not a fan. I purchased them in shaker bottles, but I'm not a fan. I like the kind in the box. The size zone that comes in a box. And then there's little packets that you get out of there and um, you shake the seasoning onto whatever you're making. That's the kind that I like to use, okay? Not the kind, I tried the kind in the shaker bottle. They got the tropical kind and a whole bunch of other kind. Get the kind in the box. When you open it, there's little packets. That's the kind that is the best. I keep doing this to emphasize packet. It, does this mean packet? <laughs> does this mean packet in sign language? <laughs> I'd love to learn how to do sign language. <laughs> Says on in the red box. There you go. It's kind of orange. Is it orange or red? I need to check on my rice here in a little bit. I'm pretty sure my potatoes. Nurley, how you doing? Welcome back in. Orange. <laughs> Alyssa, it is. Let me see. Your first dish I ever made at Gina, this is Miss Karen, was a one pan chicken and rice. And it has sazon and it was delicious. Oh, great. I love that. Yes, Ron said it's a thin box. And that's true. Let's turn this camera over because I want you all to be able to see the potatoes. Okay? Let's see, I'm going to put the camera down onto the potatoes. And hopefully you can see the butter that has melted. Gina, my first dish was smothered turkey wings. Oh, is that right? How exciting. Okay, let me check on my rice first. My rice, just about done. I want to taste my cabbage because I feel like my cabbage is done. Oh, 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 the butter. Here's what, what we're going to do. Because I have a fan, I got a high profile fan blowing this way. So my butter didn't fully melt. So look at this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this burner on to bring these potatoes back up to temperature so that the butter can melt. Prince, get out of there. <laughs> I'm talking to my puppy, y'all. Get your butt out of there. Look at this. But you can see the butter. Oh my goodness. And then just shake it. And just a nice little shake. Because um, you don't you don't want to break up your potato. Y'all, I gotta taste one of these and I'm about to smear this butter all up. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I had to. What do you mean? Oh, oh. One more time. That's it. Gina, are they that good? They are. <laughs> they are that good. So my rice is done. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to cut the rice bag open. Let me get my hands nice and clean. Cut the rice bag open, put the rice into the pan, 
And I believe that the cabbage is done. It's getting ready to be dinner time. You can turn that fan down. The fan looks, man, that fan is blowing out some cold air. So this is how I cut the bag open. And there's your rice. Perfect, fluffy, beautiful every time. Oh yeah. Come in and look at the rice. You may not be able to see it, but you may be able to. Nice, fluffy, beautiful every time. I'm so happy with it. So now I would like for you all to come over here. Let's look at the cabbage together. We do have to taste it because if it's done, we're going to say a prayer and it's time to eat. Okay, I'm going to take, get on that side. Okay, watch the steam. When you open it, you're going to have lots of steam. Right now, scoot back. Right now, it may look very uh, cloudy because there's steam. That's going to naturally happen. So now let's give it a taste. See what it tastes like if your cabbage is to your consistency that you're looking for. And if it is, guess what? It's gonna be time to eat. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna have to pick that up. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's too hot. My cabbage is done. Don't mean your cabbage is done. You have to taste it, see if you're happy with how soft your cabbage is. If it's soft to your liking, it's done. And we know the meat's done, y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. away. Beautiful cabbage and that gorgeous pot liquor. Nice fluffy rice. Potatoes. All you're missing is cornbread. And if when you make yours, make you some cornbread. Alright, let's go ahead and say a prayer. You take a drink first. Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you on today. Lord Jesus, we thank you for each and every person that's in this live chat. I pray that you bless over all of our lives. Heavenly Father, please give us all a peace of mind in Jesus Christ's name. 
No weapons formed against any of us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We bind that evil devil away from us in Jesus Christ's name. Let the devil know he stands no chance. Heavenly Father, we believe in you. We have mercy on you. We thank you for your many blessings and your lessons. Please help us to make good decisions. Thank you for the gift that you've given me to share with this world. Lord, I'm going to share it. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I will. Heavenly Father, I include you in each and everything that I do in my life. Thank you for this beautiful meal that we made today. Bless over everybody's meal today. Bless over all the homeless and starving. Please bring them a meal and shelter in the name of Jesus. And help us, Lord, and forgive us for our sins when we sin. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. How about, how about, how about a plate? Oh, wait. How about a plate? Somebody out there is ready. It's me. It's me. I'm ready. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, hold on. How are we going to do this? I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's serve it like my daddy would serve. Got to have some rice. My husband don't want the rice with his. Got to have the rice, right? Come on in, y'all. Not too close to the, to the food because it's very steamy. It'll steam up the camera. There is the cabbage. Now, if I had a bowl, I'd have pot liquor. <laughs> you bet I would. But I'm about to put, cut, look at my spoon. I'm about to put that all over my racks. Ooh, 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 that's where things just got really heated up and excited. Okay, so now here's how we serve the beautiful potatoes. Just like so. Y'all, listen here. Oh, wait. Okay, this is it. It was quick. It was simple, didn't take me all day forever in a day to cook. And your family will love you for this here recipe. You want the red pepper flakes? Get yourself. You want hot sauce? Get yourself. You want a good meal? Make yourself. <laughs> Amen, and once again to my beautiful prayer, Christopher says, thank you, Lord. Never thought of having red, I, you never have, who's that? Denise, that's just, that's what my dad did. And so that's why I do it, because he did it. Yeah, I know, it is interesting, right? Yeah, gotta have the rice, okay? <laughs> that's what Saj, I think it was Saj. Okay, so let's come down. Y'all can come down. Don't, don't worry about my, my uh, dirty apron <laughs> that you're seeing right now. All right, so I want y'all to be able to see the plate. Oh, wait. There it is. Oh, there it is. Somebody say yes. Amen. Here's the rice. I've got to show you the rice. Oh, wait. You better make you some. This is the way. This is the way I like to make cabbage. So many people, the world loves it fried. I'm not the one that likes it fried. I do like it fried. I'm not going to sit here and say I, I don't like it fried. But what I will say is this is the way I prefer to have mine. It's just the way. And, and like I said, now, when I eat this without you guys, right, when I eat this without you, I'm going to put it in the bowl with a lot of the pot liquor. Right, but I don't want to put it in the bowl because y'all can't see down into my bowl, you know. You can see it more better when it's on my plate like this. And you see how beautiful the bell peppers are. Uh, look at look at that juice. Oh wait. Okay. 
All right. All right, hold on, my messages are getting stuck. There we go. Feeware, okay, you're so welcome. All right, I'm going in for some, just some rice because this rice right now has the flavoring from that juice that I poured on it. You have to be kidding me. You know you couldn't. Mm. <laughs> Yours looks better on your plate. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's great to hear. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It's so good. I'm not, my Holy King says yummy. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> You want a bowl of this. Rasanda. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, potato. Ooh. I'm telling y'all, this is better than any baked potato. This will stand up against any potato recipe. It's so good. I'm not kidding. Oh, mm. this right here is knocking my socks off. Angelique, enjoy your evening. Thank you. You have a blessed day as well. Monroe is really excited. And Ron says, Derek, you sound like Kathy. Y'all, my cabbage, this cabbage runs through my veins. It is so good. Oh, yeah. You put the potatoes in the pot. Mm -hmm. You can do that. But I, this is how I like to do mine. Mmm. <laughs> Y'all, I done knocked my own socks off. I did. I really did. Mmm. I just knocked those old raggedy house shoes that I had on. <laughs> I just knocked them off of my feet. Mmm. 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 So I got the potato, the rice, the cabbage, the meat, all. Ah. Uh. This right here, you want to get somebody all excited, this right here will do it. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. The cabbage was cooked to perfection. It's not hard. It's not mushy. If there's one thing that I hate is some people will cook the cabbage too long. It's mushy. It's like the worst. Right? Don't cook it too long. Taste it. No matter how many times you got to taste it. Taste it. And once it gets that perfect consistency where it's not mushy but it's soft enough, turn it off. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that's good. I saw, okay, so Nancy says, I saw the video of the chicken salad and it looked delicious. The chicken salad, beautiful. I know that we're going to have um, the chicken salad tomorrow afternoon for, um, like, for lunch. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Whoop, whoop. I think I just raised the roof. Did I just raise the roof when I did that? <laughs> did I just do what they call raise the roof? Somebody answer me. <laughs> did I just raise the roof, y'all? Mm. So much flavor when you make it just like greens. 
taste it. Yes, you did. <laughs> yep, you did, Gina. <laughs> Like what did wait? What did I just wait a minute? What did I just do? I guess I can say, I can officially say that this recipe will make you raise the roof and kick off the, those old raggedy house shoes off that you had on. <laughs> Cause I do have some raggedy house shoes on, but they're so comfortable. And they keep my feet warm. I just kicked them off. Christy Fowler is laughing. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so happy. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Dakota. Take them out to use the bathroom. They got to use the bathroom. That's that's like a spoon of all that meat and veggies. Look at her. Mm, 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 mm. What is so, yo? I got to show you my plate. Mm, my plate is almost done. I, I was jamming down on the one with this. Oh, wait. I'm not going to eat all the potatoes because y'all know I'm diabetic and I, I can't physically eat that. But I, I'm going to eat this rice, though. Oh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Yo. Mmm. Gina, you have rewritten or our mamata. What movie was that on? Take a bow, Gina. You have rewritten our our mamata. What movie was that on? Somebody answer me. Okay, Miss Karen got it. <laughs> Lean on me. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. I'm gonna make tacos? Oh, Jay, that sounds good. <laughs> Y'all look, so my knuckles, these knuckles right here are drying up and I don't know why, look at that. I know it's cause I cook a lot and uh, I mean, I look like I've been fighting Tyson. But, I gotta figure out something to put on there. My husband, before I went live, my husband put a bunch of Vaseline on there. He was rubbing it in. I told him, I said, but I'm gonna wash my hands during this live like a million times. But I'm gonna have to do that again during the live. I mean, when I get off. Cause, is it a change of weather? I got some cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is what I, I love cocoa butter. It does, it makes my hands dry. I'm gonna figure it out, but uh, cause I don't like that. I don't want no dark knuckles. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I don't want no dark knuckles. <laughs> yes, the pot liquor. So Nancy says, the pot liquor with the cornbread and you can just sop it, mm, y'all. This was so good. I had to push the plate away. Well, hold on. Because I don't know about pushing the plate away. I want some more. I can eat more if I want to. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Y'all. This was a great meal. It's a stand-up meal. Oh, it's going to be even better tonight or tomorrow for leftovers, even the next day for leftovers. Everybody at work is going to be saying, what is that? It looks so good. And you're going to tell them, Gina Young showed me how to make this cabbage. And they're going to say, who's that? <laughs> you're going to tell them. I'll use whole cocoa butter. Okay, feeware. I'll 
use it. I, I got some cocoa butter. I have the original cocoa butter because I put that all over my whole body when I get out the shower. And it's a real cocoa butter. So I'll use that. But I don't know why it hasn't helped to assist my knuckles. It, it helps my body. But I don't know what I got going on with my hands. Monroe, I'm sorry I missed most of the live. Oh, God bless you. No problem. No worries. Working hands works too. I've seen that. It works. Cocoa Vaseline. Okay. Yeah, I got Palmer's, uh, Charlene. You like the smell of the original cocoa butter? Me too. Some people don't like the smell, and I guess I can understand because it can be a little overwhelming. I'm going to go ahead and take my microphone off. It's been on a long time. So you're going to hear background noise. Today was a successful day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for everything. I love you, Jesus. Thank you all for loving me. Thank you all for just being absolute amazing friends to me. What about argon oil? I used to, I used to use argon oil, uh, but I don't use it anymore. Oh, use Luberderm, is that a good one? Okay. You use Luberderm, okay. Chris Owens. Chris, you enjoyed the live. I'm so glad. Chris, I'm so glad. And uh, just remember, Chris, that on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, I'm going live again every Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Now, there are some times where I may have to cancel it for a reason, but I'll put a community post up saying, hey, y'all, I can't do it. I got to cancel. But um, so Wednesday is always at, Monday and Wednesday is always at 5 p.m., right? And um, Saturdays is at 4 p.m., but we, we have a ton of fun. So thank you for coming in, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> it makes you want to go buy some just to smell it. <laughs> y'all, I got Dakota clean in his room. Dakota's room, and if y'all don't know who Dakota is, he is our son. <laughs> his room is a trash disaster. I'm going to knock him loony. <laughs> Not really, but I want to. <laughs> Not really, but I tell you one thing. It's like pulling teeth trying to get him to clean that room and keep it clean. Mm, mm, mm. You remember those days? Oh my goodness. Y'all. He cleaning it though. He cleaning that room. He better clean that room. That room, I don't understand. How does it happen? <laughs> How does the room just go to straight dump? <laughs> what do they, mm, what do they be doing? Like, I walked by the other day, and I was like, oh, get your feet off the wall. Your feet don't belong on the wall. Like, who does that? <laughs> Lazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who does that? Get your feet off the wall, boy. Right? I don't know. I don't feel like I did that when I was younger. I cleaned my room daily when I was younger, maybe because I don't remember if it was my dad telling me to or if I just kept things in order like that. I feel like I just like to keep things in order. I kept my room together, looking nice, smelling good, everything A1, I made up my bed. I can't get him to make his bed. I can't get him to keep his room clean for one day. But. <laughs> I'm praying. <laughs> I am a praying mother. One day he will keep his room together. 
but he's working on it. He seems like he's been working on that room for hours now. <laughs> oh, you are, Feeware. Feeware said, I'm so OCD, OCD, I'll come do it. Is that right? I got a little OCD to me. I got a little OCD to me. And I like things nice and neat. I like things nice and neat, in order, in place, you know. And it's not like that when you go in that one room, which is our son's room. He's 14. He'll keep that room together, y'all. It's like you walked in another house if you walk in his room. <laughs> Ron, you too. <laughs> Denise says, I have to make my bed every, so when I get up, when I get up, I make my bed, and um, that's pretty much the only thing that I really have to do. Um, but every day, I find something in the bedroom to clean, whether it's the bathroom, like, you know, the bathtub, sweep and mop the floors, because it's wood floors, just, you know, that way we can constantly keep it nice and clean. Changing the trash once a week is just a little, you know, a little waste basket. But, you know, cleaning the shower off and all that good stuff. And he don't have a want. <laughs> and my husband cleans like crazy. My husband will clean like crazy. Dakota, he don't have no interest. Oh, Lord. So when he gets in trouble, <laughs> he's in trouble because his room is not together. And it looks like a barn. <laughs> a barnyard. <laughs> Anybody's kids in the comment section do that? Or is it just me? Okay, Sue H., you said my daughters will beg me not to clean their room because they know what I do. Oh, really? You throw it all away, won't you? <laughs> Mildred, Mildred, that is so funny. I know, Christy. Christy Fowler, that's me. I know, but, but guess what? Guess what about him? You said we couldn't go outside if our stuff wasn't together, right? Feeware says, you are funny. Thank you, Feeware. I'm just glad you're enjoying us. I appreciate having you in here. This is what we do. Um, okay, you, so you say, we can go outside if our rooms weren't clean. But these kids nowadays, y'all, I feel like I'm whispering. These kids nowadays, they don't want to go outside. At least he don't. He don't want to go outside. He don't want to go outside. He don't want to go outside. He wants to play Fortnite sit in front of the TV and play Fortnite. So what happens when they don't want to go outside? You can't take outside from them if they don't want to, <laughs> they don't want to go. <laughs> oh, your sister's OCD, she'll clean up everything. <laughs> Let me see. Video games damage you. I know they do. I know they do. He, Oh my goodness. Ah. Yeah, no PlayStation games. That's said a lot around here. <laughs> he know. He know. <laughs> no games, no cell phones, right? Right, 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 right. <laughs> I totally agree. I am the parent that agrees on that. <laughs> like I said, it's like a whole nother world in there, y'all. I we got the paint. We, we have to paint his bedroom. We have to paint his bedroom. We get to paint the bed. I think, I think he's putting his feet on the walls. That's the only thing I can think. <laughs> Take the game away. <laughs> okay, Ron. Oh, Christopher said, oh, no, I can't do no rooms. Oh, me neither. Oh, now that's Saj. <laughs> she said, oh, Mildred, that is funny. Oh, Mildred said, I know he likes to eat, don't he? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> take away the games. Listen, we can take away the games. He's still, 
he 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 does not like to claim. Mm. <laughs> He'll get it together. He'll get it. Hopefully. Look at my face. Hopefully. <laughs> that was a good one. Christy Fowler says, that was a good one, Mildred. <laughs> Oh, okay, you made Ryan and Kathy was the good easy pair. Okay, I understand. There's always going to be one that's good, one that's, you know, <laughs> it has to balance out somehow. <laughs> I understand. Y'all, my cabbage was so good. Take the games away. I know, I know. And then he'll play the games on the phone. Right. So let me tell you about his phone. I have the parental control to his phone. <laughs> yes. So how that works is, it's like, it's um, how that works is you can shut the phone down at a certain time. So if it's, if it's school season and he's in school and you know he's supposed to be in the bed 9:45. You can shut the phone. You can have the phone completely shut off and it won't turn back on until 9:45. And then you have it come back on when he leaves out the door for school. You know, so if he leaves out, you know, at 6:45, you can have the phone turn back on at 6:45. You can count the screen time that they, they show you a count of screen time, how long they was on YouTube, how long they was on the site. Um, before they download any site, they have to ask for my permission and I can say yes or no. So if they try to download, I get a message on my phone. He's trying to download this. Basically, can he download? I'll say yes or no. And if it's no, then they won't let him come back to that site. No, basically no. If it's yes, then right away he can download it. It'll be accepted by me from my phone, and he'll be able to download it. I love it. It has location. It has everything. You know when they're at their location. It'll tell you when they get to their location and when they leave their location, what time they let It's amazing. Let me tell you what it's called. Let me tell you what it's called. Family Link. Here it is. And it's done through Google. It's uh, called Family Link and you'll see a kite. Yeah, he got, he got the school friend numbers. He did, he did. Oh, that's great that you asked. Me and my husband in Dakota was just talking about that. He got a lot of numbers. They put the numbers uh, on his year his yearbook. Yeah, they put the numbers on his yearbook. So he got a ton of numbers. Okay, you said you got family link. Yeah, when you open it up and it'll say their name. Like right now it says Dakota. And then it has like a skate. See how he uses his device, right? And there's all kinds of stuff. Controls, location, lock the device, unlock the device, everything. Anything you could imagine. Settings, content restrictions, manage search results, block sites. I love it, y'all. That's the type parent I am. But there it is right there. It says family link and it's a little, um, it's a, what is it? It's just, it's a kite. <laughs> See you later, Shirley Clark. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in and joining us. We appreciate having you here today. Good night, Christy. Thank you for coming in and joining. Saj says, Christopher, and never called most of them except for the close ones. Oh, okay, yeah. Have a blessed night, Nita. Thank you for coming in. Oh, I appreciate all of you all coming in, joining us today. I think we had a splendid day, right? Good night, Helen. Thank you for coming in. 
Oh, they have that in Apple, but you call it screen time? Okay. Okay. That's, I, I think it's nice. I think it's nice. Somebody was telling me that, oh, I think it might have been my hairdresser was saying that somebody, somebody's kid was on TikTok. And I said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> and they said the little girl was young. I said, uh-uh. Not, mm-mm. <laughs> Good night, Nita. Oh, Drew, we didn't see Drew say goodbye. Drew, good night. <laughs> you said imagine that. Let me see. Where did somebody access me something? Where did Drew disappear? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think that says adios. <laughs> adios. Good night, Alyssa. Thank you for coming in and joining. <laughs> Hasta la vista. I know a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I do like to y'all. I, I I like I love to learn different languages. I love to learn different languages and I will act like I know how to talk a different language. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband be like, what? I do know some stuff. Most of the stuff that I know in different languages is food names and stuff like that, recipes or whatever. <laughs> and I can say it fluently. But sometimes, kicking it with Donna, thank you for coming in. Sometimes I'll act like I can talk another language and they just crack up. And I say, what? <laughs> like what <laughs> you didn't understand me <laughs> and they like you are totally nuts <laughs> i would love to be able to talk another language oh uh -uh. listen listen my husband was telling me this are y'all listening do y'all want to hear this somebody out there if you want to hear it say i want to hear it Let me see. Okay, he says, Yo estudio espanol por satis amos en la escuelata. <laughs> Tell me if I said it right. <laughs> Tell me if I said it right, my holy king. You know I said it right. You know I said it right. Y'all want to hear it? Y'all want to hear it? No, guess why? Because that certain thing, I it would go viral. It would be all over the internet. Gina is nuts. <laughs> I ain't doing it for y'all. I'm not doing it. Gina said, yes, we want to hear it. <laughs> Denise says, wait, what? <laughs> What I just said, I was trying to read my Holy King's message. <laughs> you know the curses. Okay. <laughs> I ain't, I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. It'll be all over the internet. She's, she's nuts. <laughs> she done flew uh, over the cuckoo. Uh-uh, I ain't doing it. <laughs> He's talking about please. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all funny. Y'all, I'm smiling so much. Right here is hurting so bad. It's hurting so bad. <laughs> Y'all are funny. We want to hear it. <laughs> we won't tell. Uh-uh. Look, look at my babies. He gonna get up as soon as I say that. Prince, where you going, honey? Oh, here he comes. He's gonna jump on my leg, y'all. 
You see my baby? Oh my goodness, where are you at? Look at him, y'all. Look at him. Prince, what are you doing, honey? What are y'all doing, guys? Oh, you love your mommy? <laughs> Come on, Gina, let's hear it. <laughs> we want the funk. Uh-uh. No, no, no. I mean, I get, I get all into it like I can really do it. And I can't. <laughs> I can't. But like I said, I can really say foods and recipes and stuff. Um, but they just think it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> he says, spill the tea. <laughs> it ain't no tea. It's just me acting nuts like I can speak another language. Prince and Polo want to hear it. Yeah, they do. They came right over to me, didn't they? <laughs> you did good. Get out of here. No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm not going to let you tell me that. <laughs> Feeware. Don't you tell me that. I did good. Say the opening in Spanish. I don't know how. <laughs> but I can act like it. <laughs> I can totally act like it. If I did that, it would have to be a situation where y'all was over here and I would do it in front of you instead of doing it live. <laughs> doing it live, it's saved forever. <laughs> they like, yep, we got her. She's nuts. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Maggie, even Maggie, look at you. Maggie talking about, go ahead. <laughs> I ain't going to let y'all peer pressure me. Nuts a day. Good night, Debbie. Let me look at the time, y'all. Okay. You're eating in Spanish right now. Let's see. You're eating in Spanish right now, straight smashing. <laughs> you said you hear it. You hear it. <laughs> oh, man. And then I'll be trying to get my husband to say certain words and stuff in a different language. And he'd be trying to say it. And he'd be like, I, it's so funny. I can't even get him to pronounce my medicines. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm like, go and get the um, hydrochlorothiazide. Right? It, it's my blood pressure medicine <laughs> he's like how do you say it and i said just say hydrochlorothiazide he like i can't he like i'm playing with you he like what color is it <laughs> i'm playing with you what color is it <laughs> you know that was funny, right? It, it was funny, De uh, Deborah. <laughs> he said, "Live la vida loca." <laughs> oh man, y'all, we have some good times on here. Oh, is it right, De Niro? Okay, it means money. Okay. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I don't know. I seen somebody said they was eating. It was Saj said they eating something right now in Spanish. I think they meant talking right now in Spanish, not eating in Spanish. It's okay. It's okay. Cause cause I'm I'm gonna set me an app on my phone to where <laughs> I'm gonna put me one of them apps on here that they're gonna teach me how to speak Spanish. I should. I did try it at one point in time, but I got irritated with them. Cause they gonna quiz me. How you gonna quiz me? Quiz they quiz me too early. You gotta let me learn it first. So 
I gotta figure out what I'm gonna be making for Wednesday. I have no clue. I don't know what I'm gonna make. But whatever whatever I make is gonna be delicious. Um Y'all, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all something that was good. So, a couple of days ago, I did a video for how to make the calzone. The calzone is like a stromboli. For those of you that don't know what either one of those is, it's like a pizza that you fold and you seal it. You got all your fillings in the inside. You bake that baby off and it's good. I made it, y'all, I'm so serious. I made it for my family. They ate that thing in 0.2 seconds. It was so good. And they was like, ooh, it tastes so good. And I was like, and, and, and the type of dough that I used was just like, you know how you can get like the Pillsbury pizza dough? You just kind of pop it open and roll it out. I used that, excuse me, I made the calzone. I filled it up with sausage, cooked sausage, pepperoni, um, pizza sauce, cheese. You can put whatever you want. Whatever fillings you like on your pizza, that's what you can put in it. And then you fold it up, seal it up real good with like an egg wash, throw it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. That baby was so flavorful. It was so good. It was like the best pizza you ever had. It was like mind-blowing. Would y'all like to do something like that on Wednesday? Be honest, but if you don't want to, I'll figure it out. Why does it say that, Drew? Teleports. What is he talking about? Oh, yes, y'all would like to do that? Y'all, I couldn't believe the recipe. And it was so interesting because you literally would think, I, I, I don't know, I was just astonished at the flavor of this calzo. And if you put two of the doughs together, you got one that's like this wide. And you could just eat on it all day. And guess what? So later there was some left over. It was nighttime. I tasted it at night and I thought, this is still good. You know, you would think it would be just good right when it came out the oven. We tried it later on in that day. It was so good. You Feeware says, I know it will be good. See? Is that the word that you know, Feeware? <laughs> Feeware knows how to speak a different language. She said, see. <laughs> so for yes. <laughs> you go, Feeware. Imagine Gina and her family on Family Feud. Oh my goodness. That would be, uh, I don't know how that would go. I can't wait to make the orange chicken this weekend. Oh, it'll be nice. It'll be so much fun. Easy, quick, simple recipe. It's packed with flavor, y'all. Okay, so let's do this. On Wednesday, let's make the calzone. Wednesday, we're gonna make the calzone. And guess what, it's cheap. If you just wanna make a pepperoni and cheese calzone, it, it, it's cheap. Okay, you wanna put bell peppers, onions, mushroom, whatever your favorite pizza topping is. That's what you're gonna get, but I'm gonna say it in the community post. I'm gonna say, Jeannie Young's cooking 5 p.m. Wednesday. Here's the ingredients. And then I'm also going to say, but what ingredients you want, that's the ingredients that I want you to pick up, okay? Because like Mildred, in her situation, she, she can get pepperoni, but she's going to get the turkey pepperoni, right? And that way she can enjoy it too. Okay, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So I'll tell you what I'm putting in mine, 
and then I'm gonna say your options is whatever you love on your pizza, okay? You love stromboli. Okay, so Wednesday, it's gonna be, it, it's stromboli calzones sort of kind of like the same thing. I'm calling it a calzone, okay? Oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. And here's the thing about that, it's so quick and simple. So quick and simple. You may have to cook a couple ingredients, you know, like onion and bell pepper or sausage if you're using that. But other than that, if you're just making a straight up pepperoni and cheese with maybe banana peppers, you're just gonna put it on there, fold it up, throw it in the oven, right? It's gonna be great. So we'll do that Wednesday. Saturday, we'll make an orange chicken. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Look at my babies. Can you make it with the round pie dough? Um, no. Pie dough is pie dough. It's okay, but because that's a great question. Pie dough is pie dough. Pizza dough and pie dough is different. Because it would be so flaky. It would be like, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't be able to withstand and hold up to your heavy ingredients, okay? Um, I mean, it, you could use it, but I don't suggest you use it. You're, you're, you're sorry, y'all. You're going to use a pizza dough. And the pizza dough comes in a roll like this. It's about this skinny. It's pizza dough. And it probably only costs like maybe one something for each one. If you just want to make a small one, just buy one. If you want to make a nice one, you, you know, nice size like this, that you could cut on and eat all through the day, you're going to buy two. And they just like that. Pepperoni, get you a small can. You can get you like a small can of the pizza sauce. And whatever your favorite pizza topping is, okay? He said, yes, ma'am, you hear me? <laughs> I'm over here eating. Oh, you are? You're eating pizza right now? Okay. Okay. You said do it, okay? Steve Harvey would be looking mm -hmm. like we crazy. Why? Why? Why do you say that? I think Steve Harvey would be excited if he turned this channel on. I think he would get excited. I think he would say, I gotta have her on one of my talk shows. <laughs> oh, if we was all on Family Feud. Oh my goodness. I don't know how that would work. Well, we got the game. We'll never get no answers when we playing at home. <laughs> My husband said, we got the game here, and we don't never get the answers. But when we, we masters on TV. When we, somebody else's he said, when we play it at home, we never get the answers, right? He said, but when it's playing on TV, we always have the answers. <laughs> so how would that work if we was really in there? Right? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I said, really in there. Stop it. No, because when I say in there, they think somebody's in here. That, yeah. That's the word that they flipped around. <laughs> you have all the answers. Oh, you have all the answers? I know, but what happens after, uh, after your turn is over? <laughs> right? So you would get the answer, and then it was time for me to answer because I'm standing beside you. What if my mind just goes whoop, <laughs> and I don't know what to say? Well, how would we win if you're the only one that got the answers? <laughs> you said that's how it is, and we would get the hard questions. I think so, Glenda. <laughs> oh, you was talking about fast money. I don't know what that is. Oh, now you can, yeah, there you go. Oh. You use her for that there. She get all the answers. Oh, okay, okay. Fast money, you get all the answers, you'll win the game. Oh. What you're talking about when you say fat the fast money yeah, you okay. when it just be too oh okay okay so he just helped me to understand what you're talking about okay mm -hmm. 
<laughs> cabbage. Look, here's that. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I didn't know what fast money was. I, I, but I didn't know it was called that, you know. The waterfall screen behind you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love that waterfall, y'all. Thank you. Some of those questions are crazy. I'm like, what kind of people? Hold on, let me see. You said, uh, I'm like, what kind of people are they surveying? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> some of their answers don't seem right. <laughs> what kind of people are they surveying? That's cute. I like the way you put that. <laughs> oh, man, that was really cute. <laughs> Must be surveying. <laughs> what did you say, Drew? <laughs> Have you ever tried apple rose? I don't know what apple rose, apple rose what? I don't know what that is, little bit. What? Wait a minute. So this person said, hold on, let me get this nut out of here. Hold on. <laughs> let me get this person out of here. Oh Lord. This person's message will be hidden. Hold on. They said they said they love getting high to my content until their nose bleeds. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand that message. YouTube, I don't know where that person came from. They are crazy. I don't understand their whole message. What just happened, y'all? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Angela is cracking up. Jared says, hello? <laughs> um, hello? <laughs> Jackie said, what the heck? Please knock them out, Gina. <laughs> My goodness. Sometimes some crazy stuff can happen. <laughs> what the heck just happened, y'all? Let me go back and make sure that's taken care of. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. It can happen sometimes. <laughs> Ma, what'd you say, baby? That's deep right there. He said, "That's that's now that's deep." That's deep right there. <laughs> Whoa! Oh man, y'all. Well, guess what? I had so much fun with you all. I hope that you all had a great time today. I love y'all. I wasn't feeling good this morning. I was sick. I was in the bed. I couldn't get out the bed. My stomach was bothering me. I just didn't feel good. I prayed to the good Lord. I couldn't wait to come on here and see y'all. And I was hoping that I was able to do and it. And, attitude last and, night. and here we are. Uh oh. And I told me, the dogs, and Dakota to get away from you. Okay, okay, okay. So my husband wants y'all to know something. He no, said, he no, said. Don't, don't, don't. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me tell y'all. He said, and tell him how you had an attitude last night. <laughs> Yeah. He uh, said, he said, he I took Dakota and the dog. <laughs> he said, so he, everybody stay away from you. He said, he took Dakota and the dogs and told everybody to stay away from me. <laughs> I didn't feel good, y'all. I didn't feel good. And then this morning when I woke up, I didn't feel good. <laughs> he said, ain't nobody on that. <laughs> But when I got up this morning, he gave me such a big hug, y'all. He had coffee made. <laughs> and I began to feel better. They said, oh. <laughs> I know. He, he did. He took Dakota, took the dogs. The house was empty. He told the dogs get away from her. He, told the, he told the dogs, get away, get on away from her. She in here acting crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Thank you. 
They laughing. They are cracking up. Mm, mm, mm. So listen, it's going to be fun on Wednesday. Wednesday, we're making calzones. Making calzones so you all get to make it with me. It's a very inexpensive recipe. And you're going to love it. And the great thing about this recipe, I'm just going to say it again. I know I just said it a few minutes ago. You don't have to eat it right then and there. If you have some later, you can heat. And that's what he's just saying right now, my husband. My husband's like, it was really good. So we're, you can heat them up and they still just as good. Yeah, you can heat them up and they still just as good. So we'll do that Wednesday. And Saturday we're making um, orange chicken. I love you all. I'm gonna get off of here. Give me a big, 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 big hug. Give me a hug, y'all. Bring it on in, bring it on in. Give me a hug. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. It's never goodbye, it's I'm seeing you on Wednesday. Now, tomorrow, let's talk about it one more time. Gina Young is gonna be over on a new channel showing you all how to make delicious vegan baked macaroni and cheese that you're gonna love you're gonna want to share this recipe with your family you're gonna want to share this recipe with your family it's gonna knock you off your socks or knock the socks off of you what how do i say it <laughs> i forgot how i say it but listen we're gonna have a fun time make sure so you'll get the notification bell um when we release that video God bless you all. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Thank you all for coming in and joining. And I'll, I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Let's get prepared for another great live. I love you so much. Everybody's saying that you love me. I love you too. God bless. Good night. I, guess what I'm getting ready to go do? I'm going to knock him in the head for telling y'all I had an attitude. He, he just said, uh-uh. You feel me. He, he just said, uh-uh. <laughs> My whole character is deep down on there. Because you talk about, I ain't on you. Right you talk about stuff. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm they, trying to let them know all types of things. <laughs> he said, I'm going to start. Oh, he said. <laughs> yeah, I am. He said, he said, I'm going to start letting y'all know all types of stuff about, yeah, about her. Yeah, <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna knock him out, y'all. I love him. I love him so much. He said, "I'm gonna start tell." He said, "It's okay. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell them all, all type of stuff about you." <laughs> they are cracking up. They are cracking up. <laughs> He said, we be talking about him and he ain't even around. Dakota told me. I said, okay, he said, Dakota you know. told him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, we do, Jackie. <laughs> they are laughing so hard. <laughs> Look, Angela. Angela is so funny. Guess what she just said? What? Tell us everything. I am. <laughs> Girl, Angie, she ain't no word. Angie, Angie, he said, say it again. He said he gonna tell y'all everything. Yeah, he said, he said, don't worry about it. I'm gonna bring the tea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that's great. That's great. <laughs> it's great to have a good laugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all, this is hurting so bad from smiling. We had another great day. Another great day. Once again. Thank y'all for coming in. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to see you Wednesday, right? I'm going to see you tomorrow over on a new channel. God bless and good night. <laughs>